labor estimates also start at the onset of the project. In the stage of clearing and grubbing, laborers are employed to prepare the area for the project. Learn the details of clearing and grubbing, excavation and backfill using the standard productivity rates here in construction engineering projects and management. Clearing and grabbing is defined as the disposal of all debris and vegetation specified in the contract from the project site, although not all should be cleared out, as there are some objects which are also specified to remain in place due to their aesthetic value. Item 100 of the DPWH Blue Book specifies the standard labor output for clearing and grabbing. The capability output is divided according to the foliage, and for light vegetation or debris, manual labor can be averaged to 50 square meters per day. Medium foliage would reduce output to 35 square meters per laborer per day, still done manually. For heavy foliage, manual labor is reduced to 25 square meters per person per day or 200 square meters per a group of men per day if they will be using a chainsaw. One unit of mangang depends on the activity, and for clearing and grabbing, the chainsaw will be operated by one individual while being assisted by a fellow laborer. In case where the foliage would include young trees of up to half a meter diameter, manual labor for cutting such trees is standardized at one tree per man per day, but definitely using a chainsaw will do the job faster at 10 trees per two mangang per day. Again, a mangang for such a job requires one labor handling the chainsaw and the other assisting him. When estimating labor costs or duration, the primary concept used in each activity is duration is the result of comparing the required entity, which could be a total length, volume, or area, with that of the available resources, which can be from manual labor or through some equipment and their standard output. Let's focus on the first example, where the duration of clearing and grabbing is to be completed when six laborers are required to work manually or if two chainsaws are rented. In the scenario, the area of 2,500 square meters is of dense foliage, which even includes 140 trees, but only 76 of them should be cut down. So let's answer the first requirement of manually clearing the area, starting off with tree cutting. The duration of tree cutting will be solved as the required number of trees divided by the number of laborers and their output. That is the ratio of 76 trees with 6 laborers who have the output of 1 tree per man per day. So 76 divided by 6 times 1 is 12.57 days. After the trees are cut, we proceed with clearing the dense foliage. So the area of 2,500 square meters will be cleared by 6 men with output of 25 square meters per man per day and it will result to 16.67 days. So the total duration of such activities will simply be the summation of durations of tree cutting and clearing, and that is 12.67 with 16.67, that would result to 29.37 days, which can be rounded to 29 and a half days for all six laborers. How about the second case when two chainsaws are rented for the job? So starting with tree cutting, 
the formulation of required from the given would be 76 trees to be divided by two chances with individual output of 10 trees per two man gang per day, and that will result to 3.8 days. This shows that the area is cleared from any unwanted trees in 3.8 days. Take note that in these days, there are four laborers working, two are the handlers and two are the assistants. Since there are six total laborers hired, what are the remaining two workers doing? During the tree cutting, the two remaining laborers started clearing. The area that they cleared during 3.8 days of tree cutting is computed as two men times each individual's output of 25 square meters per man per day during 3.8 days, and they have cleared 190 square meters. From the recent computation, we can conclude that the remaining area to be cleared is 2,500 less 190 square meters cleared earlier, and that is 2,310 square meters left. The duration of clearing such area using two chainsaws will be 2,310 square meters, divided by the two chainsaws of 200 square meters output per day for each chainsaw, so the duration of clearing the remaining area is 5.775 days. If we are to rent tools on per day basis, then we just take the rounded days of 5 using the chainsaws. So 5 days of 200 square meters output for each would finish 2,000 square meters. The remaining will have to be done by hand. And again, the remaining two laborers will be manually clearing while four are using the chainsaws. So we can start their manual clearing at the same time. Or that would be taken as the remaining 310 square meters cleared by two men of 25 square meters output per man per day, and it will take them 6.2 days to clear the remaining area. So the total duration of the job can be classified into two, one for those workers with chainsaws and two for the pure manual labor. The four laborers using chainsaw took 3.8 days to cut the trees and another five days to clear the area of 2,000 square meters for a total of 8.8 or let's say nine days. The remaining two laborers work purely by hand with a start of 3.8 days similar with those cutting trees and another 6.2 days for clearing the remaining area, giving them 10 days in total. Moving on to excavation. As defined from the handbook and other references, the word excavation refers to the howling of soil for flattening the surface or when preparing for driveways. The digging done when foundations are to be laid out are termed as a structural excavation, which would be requiring backfill after the pouring of footing and column. In item 102 of the Blue Book, the standards for excavation are provided both manual and with equipment. Depending on the borough, capacity of 3 cubic meters per man per day is computed for common borough. The unclassified materials will reduce the output to half, making it 1.5 cubic meters per man per day. In cases where there are rocks in the soil, the output is taken as 0.5 cubic meters per man per day. The second part of the item is using equipment with the condition that the distance for disposal is within 30 meters. A small dozer of model D4 can excavate 210 cubic meters per day. A D6 dozer can excavate 250 cubic meters per day. And a D8 dozer can work on 410 cubic meters per day. Let us illustrate the computation of item 102 through an example, which is a continuation of the previous scenario we discussed. The commercial building requires a common excavation of 620 cubic meters and structural excavation is computed as 220 cubic meters. It is required to determine the duration of excavation done manually and through a dozer. Starting with manual excavation, compute for the total excavation, assuming that the materials for both kinds of excavation have the same. The total volume adds 620 plus 220 cubic meters and that is 840 cubic meters. With pure soil or common borrow and six laborers working, 
we can compute for the duration of the excavation as the required volume of 840 cubic meters divided by the six laborers with their capacity output of 3 cubic meters per man per day, and that will yield to 46.67 days. When using a D4 dozer, the total volume will still be used, and that is 840 cubic meters. Such volume will be divided by the capacity of one dozer, which is 210 cubic meters for D4. By doing so, the excavation can be completed in four days. The next activity after excavation is embankment or backfill, especially for structural excavation. Item 104 of the Blue Book shows the standards starting with the shrinkage or swell factor depending on the materials to be used. For pure soil, a swell factor of 20% is used. Such factor is significant as soil can swell much when being excavated when air is introduced between soil particles. 15% swell factor is used for aggregate burrow. There is a slight reduction as gravel has limited compaction compared to soil. The embankment procedure is divided into two activities. First is placing the backfill, where, if done manually, a standard output of 4 cubic meters per man per day is used. When a road grader is used to place backfill, a range of 600 to 400 cubic meters per day is expected. Furthermore, the terrain of the workplace would also have an effect in the output of the equipment. So if the terrain is considered flat, common burrow can be placed with 600 cubic meters per day output. A rolling terrain reduces such output to 550 cubic meters and mountainous terrain makes it 500 cubic meters per day. In case the material to be used is aggregate burrow, on flat terrain, the standard 400 cubic meters is used. Rolling terrain reduces such a standard to 350 cubic meters, and mountainous terrain works with 300 cubic meters per day. The other activity of backfill is compaction. The standard manual output is 2 cubic meters per man per day, and through equipment, a portable plate compactor can be used with 50 cubic meters per man per day. A higher output equipment is a tonner road roller, which can compact 100 cubic meters per man per day. And even a larger road roller of 9 to 11 tonner can yield 300 cubic meters per man per day. Some important notes to also consider when a machine is used for backfilling. The first is a road roller would also entail a water truck to be rented. This is to compact the grade easier. Next is the ratio of two road rollers to compact the grade placed by each road grader. And last one is the number of dump trucks to be rented with each road grader. The third example is still a continuation of the same scenario. This time, we focus on backfilling, so with the structural excavation specified earlier, a volume of 180 cubic meters should be placed back to cover the foundation. Take note that what we are working on backfill are the small excavations for footings, thus, there is no need for massive equipment to do the job. Getting back to the problem, the 180 cubic meters is the compacted volume which is required for the footings to be covered. Although this is the compacted volume, this is the end result after the backfill, but the workers will be dealing with the in-situ volume and not the compacted volume. So to relate in-situ volume with compacted volume, integrate the shrinkage factor, making the relationship in-situ volume multiplied by 1 less the shrinkage factor is equal to the compacted volume. Since we are looking for the in-situ volume, plug in 180 cubic meters compacted volume, and this is divided by 1 minus the shrinkage factor of common borrow, which is 20%. This results to 225 cubic meters. With such volume, the duration of placement of burrow will be computed as 225 cubic meters divided by 6 laborers with a capacity of 4 cubic meters per man per day, giving 9.375 days for burrow placing. The other step, which is compacting, 
will be measured by dividing the in-situ volume of 225 cubic meters divided by six laborers working at two cubic meters output per month per day, so the compaction yields 18.75 days.